Hey, how are you doing? Good. I'm in Worcester, Vermont. <laughs> you're you're in Worcester, Vermont? Yeah. Nice. Did yeah. you stay for the solar? Yeah, and now I'm visiting a friend whose birthday it is today. So uh, I just got here and had to jump into the meeting and yeah. Um, just to let you know, we are recording. So. Okay, great. And... Uh, there's two attendees. I'm going to make them hosts, or not hosts, but promote to panelist. And uh, Sarah's here. Okay, almost have a quorum. Yeah, I mean this snow, this snow was up over the bench and covering this deck yesterday. <laughs> but just pushing it off in the bench Bridge, and okay. radiate heat and it looks like it looks like it's been exposed for a week already. But yeah, yesterday it was I think we almost, I think we have a quorum as soon as uh, Sarah and Britt turn on their screens. And Ellen's here too. Yes, we have a quorum. Yay. There's Sarah. All right, so we'll start in one minute. I think we're all here except Bennett, who's not going to be here. He said family stuff happened. So, um, yeah. And I'm in Vermont at my friend's house, but I will be able to. I've brought my notes and I have all the stuff we need. So I think we can go. Um, I need, we need someone to take minutes. Ellen or Britt, either of you want to do that? I did it last time. <laughs> if somebody else wants to do it, I, I can do it. Okay, so Britt will be our note taker. Yeah, Anna and Carter. I'm here. I just I I'm eating food, so I was turning my screen off for that part. But I I'll, <laughs> I'm here. Okay, good. Anna Carter is visiting. Uh, she's not putting her screen on. And David, uh, whose name I forget last name. Let me see what it is. Uh, oh, David Matavosian is also here. So, uh, yeah, Good. bring that down a little bit again. All right, so um, agenda, let me get the agenda. All right, can't have this. All right, give me one more second. And okay. So announcements and public comments. Anyone have any comments? Um, I don't have much time today, unfortunately, but I want to say two things. Um, one, if you guys would like, I have, um, I'm able to have connections with the like uh university of massachusetts amherst clubs that would be interested in tree planting if you want people from there to come help out on the tree planting on the 13th um if that if, if like if you guys are open to that 
Yeah, we're totally open to having volunteers helping. Um, it's good to know a little ahead of time if possible, but if people show up sometimes, that's fine too. Um, yeah, but, yeah. And then yeah. secondly, uh, last week, um, you asked if somebody could write something for the Hampshire Gazette about uh, benefits yes. of trees. And I volunteered, but I did not have the time. I couldn't even figure out how to submit something to Hampshire Gazette, so I apologize. Okay, do you have something written? No. Okay. If you have something written, it'd be easy to show you how to um, submit it. So, you know, if you can do that for next month, that'd be great. Okay. Or whenever, whenever you can. Yeah. Okay. Great. All right. Anything else? So next is approval of minutes. Um, everyone read the minutes, of course, and we're ready to approve them. Yes. I wasn't at last month's meeting, so I'll, I will abstain. Okay. Anyone have any changes or comments? No. All right. In favor of the minutes? Thumbs up. Hands up. Okay. Good. So you record that. And um, let's see. Hours. Uh, I'll go through my screen. Julian, hours? Uh, probably about five. Okay. Uh, Ellen? Um, probably two. Two. Uh, Sarah? Two. Two. Britt? Two. Two. Um, somebody's not on the screen, so I can't remember who it is. Uh, who am I missing here? Julian. Julian. No, I oh, did no, Julian. Julian just went. Sorry. No, I just went. Me, um, you. I'm probably at about eight hours. Uh, what does, I thought we had one more person. Oh, Shoshana is not here for some reason. Okay. She'd probably be late. Okay. And Bennett, I'll find out his hours. Good. All right. So that's good. Um, chairs report. Uh, some Girl Scouts will be joining us on this Saturday. I don't know how many yet. Um, when we're planting this Saturday, we need to finalize the town council proclamation. So we'll talk about that a little later. Um, somebody who lives at Wayfinders on Butternut Farm was upset about a tree being removed. And um, it was a private tree. There's nothing we can do, but we did. Uh, I did say that she could come to this meeting and we would look at the site. Um, that's down off of... Um, it's down in South Amherst, off of Long Meadow Drive, I think. Alan, do you know about that? Yes, that was Long Meadow Drive. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But again, it is a private tree. Maybe we can help them plant somewhere nearby. Um, well, I had David's article. I don't have your email address, David. So at some point, if you can either send that to the committee or to me, that'd be great. Um, gotcha. Um, I attended an insect pest webinar that was interesting. Um, a couple of the insects are not really a concern for us, like box tree moth. Um, the spotted lanternfly was pretty interesting. They say, other than the lanthus trees, which is an invasive tree that they seem to pre really prefer, they don't cause that much damage on most of the other trees. They like red maples, but don't kill red maples. So um, there's some interesting things. Um, Beech leaf disease is very cold hardy. There's no solution. And trees have a three to 10 year survival uh, gap after they first get infected. And the elm zigzag sawfly only affects elms. Um, is it in Hampshire County? They said it's in Hamden and Berkshire. Do we have that, Ellen? Or is that Henry? Elm zigzag sawfly. Do we have that in Hampshire County? I have not seen that around. It okay. Might be, yeah. But they, he said that uh, healthy trees usually recover from it. And there's already a viral control insect or pest here that will keep the numbers down. So that didn't sound like a big problem. So other than the ones we already know about that are a problem, like emerald ash borer and uh, two lion chestnut beetle, chestnut borer, and some of the other ones, yeah. Uh, hemlock willy delgid where we're okay so most of the other thing nothing new uh, there are more um webinars coming up uh, sometimes the free there's one on april 30th that sounds interesting it's a um, there's my note the summer tree summit and i may join that it's 20 dollars 
But um, it's a good way to learn more about stuff. I find out about most of these through the Citizens Forest, the newsletter, which I send you the link to. So I encourage everyone to read through that and we'll skim through that. There's usually a lot of good information. Are these that, DCR, Henry? Who puts these that, on? Who puts these on? Citizen, well, different groups put them on, right. but Citizen Forester um, newsletter, which the state puts out. Or DCR, um, yeah. Yeah, is a really good way to learn about them and learn other things. So I encourage everyone to read Citizen Forested newsletter. You can subscribe and then it comes out every three months. Yeah. Used to be monthly. Yeah. It used to be written by Molly, who was from Amherst and uh, she would come to our meetings a lot and help out. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, oh, I subscribe to Northern Woodland Magazine. It's one of my favorite magazines, it comes monthly. And if anyone's interested, I would offer to buy you a free subscription. It's really, it's more about forests than street trees, but just lots of information about trees and forests and um, cutting trees for lumber and hunting under forest, I mean, just everything, you know, preserving forests, restoring forests. Um, yeah. Um, so it's, it's a great magazine. If you're interested, let me know and I will get you a free subscription. Um, since I donate money anyway, I figure this is a way to donate money to them and help other people at once. Um, I have not found a canopy for our booth for, um, you have a canopy? I have, I have a canopy, yeah. Awesome, all right, good. So I, I wasn't worry. here last month. I have two canopies. Okay, so that's set, Britt. Um, and that's the that 20th, the, right? It's, um, yeah. Is it the sustainability fair? Yeah. Yes, that's what it is. Great, yeah, awesome. But somebody will have to remind me to bring it. Okay. okay. Well, put it in the minutes and then I'll remind you. Okay. So Henry will remind Britt. <laughs> Good. Um, we'll talk about the sustainability festival soon. The nursery, we need to get back there and get the trees planted. We may have to do an extra planting. Um, we'll talk about that a little later. Um, the Arlington Tree Committee posts a lot of interesting stuff on Facebook and I follow them. So um, it might be good if some of the others of us uh, followed the Arlington Massachusetts Tree Committee and they follow us and the Greenfield Tree Committee. It's nice that we like each other's posts, helps get all of us more publicity. So I encourage that. Um, Sherry Wilson, appreciation. I think someone wants to plant a tree in honor of Sherry Wilson, who used to write the garden column for the uh, Hampshire Gazette. And she covered tree things back in the day. Uh, I forget what that is, but that was an email that came in to us. Henry, um, just I'll jump in. She was reaching out to me for information about planting at Memorial, Munson Memorial Library. So maybe that's what it was about. Sherry Wilson called me and wanted to discuss what was being planted and what other trees have been planted there recently? At the library, South Amherst yeah. Library. Yeah. Oh, I thought there was something else, so maybe I'm getting that confused. There so. might be something else, but I didn't know, since you didn't know for sure. Okay. Good. Possibly, is it? Um, one other thing I found in Citizen Forest and Newsletter is uh, there are environmental justice grants, and somebody would need to take that on as a project and research whether we can, whether we can apply and whether we have a, 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 a possible uh, thing that we would want to fund. So that would take some work of somebody to do. So um, that's all coming up in the agenda. Uh, that's the end of my stuff that I've noticed. Uh, Julian, co-chair's report. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, Phyllis Leher um, has reached out to me um, to publicize the tree planting for April in the bulletin. Um, one thing I was wondering, she was wondering when the Sue Hugus tree planting memorial planting was going to be within the nine to noon window. About 11 is what I told her. Is that right? Okay. That's the so, library tree? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that, and then uh, the other thing is I got an email from Lauren Mills asking about the uh, other tree um, in Butternut. Uh, farms. Um, okay. I just responded that it was a private tree, but that the committee would certainly, um, that I would bring up a possibility yeah, that, of, a tree, of a tree planting. That's that the one on Long Meadow. Location. Yeah, I know. Um, yeah. So there's that. The other thing 
is that I have um, shared uh, shared with the middle school um, science teachers that um, our committee does these work days and for kids in the environmental action program in middle school um, that they could come out and help us plant trees um, this Saturday and um, in future dates. Uh, so I'll be giving a presentation about what we do, sort of encouraging people to come there sometime in May. And then um, the last thing I had was just that I attended the Tree Wardens and Foresters dinner. Nice. Anything to report from that? Uh, not really. It was mostly um, two interesting presentations, not exactly relevant to what we do, but uh, there was a presentation on um, like electric equipment, electric chainsaws, sort of going green in that industry, and then emergency first aid in the field um, and applying that. Thank you. All right, Alan, Tree Warden's report. Um, so we did have a uh, illegal tree cutting uh, on a property at 300 West Street last month. Um, there was a, a, a property owner was putting an addition on their property and they filed the permits with the planning department and you know all the stuff. And um, I guess they didn't know the permitting process well enough or somebody didn't refer them and they went in and started you know clearing and doing a bunch of stuff before they were supposed to um and then um they filed for their driveway permit for a new curb cut which activates um that's within dpw which activates my notification um and uh i went down to look and they had already brushed the tree out and left had just the uh, stem standing there. So um, they were fined uh, $300, which is the fine. And they were, they paid a, a replacement, the replacement cost, which um, for an 18 inch blue spruce was $1,620. Um, so a total of $1,920. Um, they've paid it. Uh, their project has been given the go ahead to continue because uh, everything was put on hold. Um, they apologized profusely. They said they weren't aware of what was, that they need to do it. Um, <clears throat> so, um, and then I've, I've talked with them and they were going to plant some, the town will be planting some trees and they have, they have, there are two properties there that are connected sort of. Um, they actually have plantings designed in their planting plan to put trees back in there. Um, and then I think the town will be able to put a few more in uh, further down the road a little bit. So <clears throat> this is just past Crockett Farm Elementary School heading south on the left-hand side. Um, so. That was the first one we've had in a while. Well, it's been a long time. Um, for South Amherst Common, we've, um, so we took down three compromised Norway maples. So two of them were, had very dead crowns. There were like less than 50% of the live crown was still there and they were <clears throat> not coming back. They had um, sap rot forming on the main trunk in the upper crown. Um, so we took those down. There's another Nori maple that had a significant cavity in it, uh, right below the branch union where the crown sort of forms. Um, and the cavity wasn't I didn't really think it was as bad until I started taking a closer look and realized that it was connected to another cavity further up on the other side of the tree. So since we were doing tree planting, I opted to take that one down. Um, and we took down a red maple that was um, had a significant stem girdling root around the uh, trunk. Um, and you know, 50%, over 50% 50 of the crown, the main stem was dead. Um, and we just had a few lower lateral branches that came up that, that were still alive. So we took that tree down and we took down a dead elm tree on the South Amherst Common. So those stumps have been ground and those are the locations that have opened up the planting locations for the new trees. So there are 12 trees, including the L library tree being planted um, on the South Amherst Common um, this weekend, this Saturday. 
Um, we have, uh, so the species will be red maple, swamp white oak, and sycamore um, being planted mm -hmm. on the common. Um, it's going to be our first, uh, first time in a while that we've purchased, we've had trees donated that were containerized, but these we're actually purchasing um, from Wansnick Nursery. Um, they actually had the American sycamore, which um, the other nurseries didn't have in stock. So um, it's going to be containerized material, not grow bags, not bald and burlap. So we're going to have to pay attention to uh, root pruning those before we plant them to make sure we don't develop stem girdling roots. And tomorrow, uh, Thursday, I'm picking up the bare root tree stock from Bigelow Nursery. Um, I have the grow bags in stock and we will need to, you know, relatively quickly find time to get these planted in the grow bags down at the Station Road Horse Farm Nursery. Um, so if we can come up with a potential date to plant trees in the grow bags um, as soon as possible, that'd be great. Oh, pretty much one question is, I went down there to look for a place to connect a hose. Is there a spigot or anything? I didn't find it. There is. There is a spigot there. Um, we have to put the meter in, which is okay. something we can work on. Um, I can also bring the water tank down there. So for 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 yeah. getting the trees in, um, the building was winterized for the winter. We have okay. the water department still needs to put the meter in. Um, but uh, yeah, I can have the water tank down there to provide water. Right. I'll probably start watering it sometime in May, but I just figured to take a hike down there and see. Check it out. Good idea. There yes. Oh, go ahead. I was just going to say there was a lot of chatter on the Nextdoor app about the tree cutting on the South Common, and I, I quieted them down, <laughs> waited them all to come on Saturday. So That's great. So this is on the Next Nextdoor app? Is that what it's, called? It's, a, it's an app called Nextdoor, and then you like register for the town you live in, and it just... I don't really follow it, but I got an alert and it mm. I was like, what's going on with the all the trees being cut down on the South Common? Why does this, you know, and it went into this whole, everybody started complaining, but um, yeah. Hmm, it's interesting. Yeah. Thanks for sharing <laughs> that. <laughs> Maybe I should get an app. No, probably not. No, no. <laughs> I was just going to say that um, the planting of the bare root saplings um seems like an activity that young volunteers could help with perhaps mm -hmm. more effectively than a regular planting so julian maybe those middle school students um that you've mentioned or you know yeah like i'm thinking about like my 10 year old i feel like that's something that that a young kid could help with so if we end up doing that outside of our normal monthly planting um maybe we can try to mobilize some people that don't normally come out to help with plantings. That's true. Although the kids mostly like digging the holes. So <laughs> but they're, be, yeah. they're probably not very good at digging the holes. That's <laughs> they, true. Yeah. Okay. They could, they could throw dirt at each other or something. Good. Um, I'm going to interrupt the, well, let's just finish with the, the treasures report. Then I'll, I'll go back to what we have guests and I want to let them talk about the issues they came for. So uh, treasures report, Sarah. The committee count balance is $11,067.29, which reflects $256 spent for the Arbor Day seedlings. Spent for what? The Arbor Day seedlings. Okay, yeah, and um, the money. So the money that Alan received from the fine has not come in yet. No. All right. Can you keep uh, make yourself a note to keep track of that? Yes. Great. Thank you. Good. All right. Uh, social media report. Yes, I um, will plan to post something probably on Friday. Uh, like an actual post about the tree planting um, for Saturday so people know about it. Um, 
I think that's all I have to report. And Facebook, I made um, an event for the um, the tree planting. I also made an event for the um, sustainability festival to, uh, plant tree giveaway. Um, and I've I've also been like you know putting in a few different other little things, you know, just of interest to tree lovers like us. Okay. Good, thanks. Anything else on that? No? No, I don't think so. Oh yeah, no. and I also posted it to, um, I posted the weekend's event to neighborhood or next door. Yeah, next door. I put it on next door. I also shared it to a group, uh, maybe two groups in uh, the Facebook world. Great, thank you. I feel like next door is the new the new thing, up and coming thing. <laughs> next door is old. <laughs> it is. <Yeah. laughs> I'm pretty tired of it. Yeah. It's it's is, a lot of complaining. Yeah. Is it worth us putting an account on or I don't think you can do that. I think you have to be an individual resident and that you have to get invited by your neighbors and oh, I see. well, maybe as a town committee, they would maybe that could be I don't know. Um, or we'll just do it individually. That's fine. If Shoshana posts, hey, we're doing a planting on that. Yeah, that would be good. And I think it's great, um, Ellen, that um, that people are questioning when they see a tree taken down. Mm -hmm. You know, I was uh, I pruned a dead branch off the tree in front of the library, the Jones Library, a few weeks ago or a month ago, and I had my saw out and I was pruning it off, and lots of people walked by. Nobody questioned what I was doing. You know, and I mean, I felt like I was doing something good, but it would have been nice if people say, hey, are you supposed to be cutting that down, you know? So if people challenge that Alan's taking down trees legitimately, that's good. You know, um, it means people I've, are looking and thinking, so. I've had people, um, I've been eating, like during December, I was eating the berries off the tree in front of the library and people mm -hmm. came up to me and like, are you sure? And I was like, yes, sure. Yeah. And then some of them tried it, and then they're believers now. Which yeah, I've had, I've which had that experience too. It's a black gum tree, I think, right? Yeah, the black gum in front oh, of the library. library. Yeah. It's yeah. like right next to the road, like right where the crosswalk is in front of the library. Yeah. We could do like an Amherst tree foresting foraging walk. That'd be fun. Well, <laughs> we we talked about it when we did the um the downtown tree tour. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All okay. right. So edible trees tour around. Yeah. Okay. That'd be next year's thing. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So uh, we got a lot on the agenda. One of the things is the second Saturday work days and planting um, and the tree nursery. But Anna, do you want to talk about um, Misty Meadows? Yes. Sure. Um, I can turn on. I don't know how to turn on my my face, but Somehow I didn't see an option here. It's okay. You don't have to see my face, I guess. Um, first of all, I would like to say that in my experience next door, since you brought it up, started during COVID when people were feeling isolated and you can distinguish your neighborhood more or less. Sometimes you get things that aren't exactly in your neighborhood. And it's, it's more than just complaining. Like people say, oh, I have a bear that showed up or a porcupine behind my tree. And, and sometimes it's warnings and I don't think it's all complaining. So no, it's I do, not, I'm sorry I said that. I, I do think that a lot of, the, I mean, there are things that are more complaining like Amherst Indy and things like that. But um, anyway, they try to control, uh, there is some kind of control on it so that the conversation doesn't get outrageous. And I just hardly ever do anything at all or ever post, but I, I did hear about good electricians and things like that. So there is good information exchange. Um, anyway, uh, I do have uh, a report from my neighborhood. Um, the suggestion is that if we could have uh, some kind of uh, input about when we would like it, to have the two trees put in, we would like to uh, do it after our uh, probably mid to late May annual meeting so that we can get 
uh, more pit, uh, more neighborhood participation. And it is just two trees, but still we were gonna, I think it would bring some visibility to the Shade Tree Committee and hopefully we could again have it as a community bonding experience. And we are, you know, perhaps even gonna have a, a dedication ceremony. These are our two past presidents that have passed away. That that the that's the memorial for that. So if it could be sort of like early to mid-June or even later, I don't know if that's too late to plant trees, but I think our meeting is going to be to it's not set yet, but towards the mid to end of May. So it'll give us a little time to see when people are available, if if you're flexible to that, or if you I know you have a tight schedule yourself. So anyway, that's the re that's the feedback I got. So you would like the planting to be early June? I think early June could, early to mid-June could be good if that's not too late. No, it's not too late generally. Yeah, uh, yeah. probably more like mid-June, but if we could be able to get some information from the, the neighbors to see when people are available to. So we would like to have an opportunity to get as many people out participating in our neighborhood as possible. So if you're flexible that way, we could communicate about it once we find out when our people are available. Okay. Um, I mean, generally we plant on second Saturday since it's just two trees. Um, a couple of us could just come plant them if Alan brought the stuff over ahead of time. Um, okay, so-, so um, We'd be pretty flexible that way. Yeah, okay, so second Saturday, you're saying is probably when you're gonna schedule it? Well, no, what I'm saying is, you know, if, if we can combine it with second Saturday, that's the easiest for us. I but since it's, since it's just two trees, it may be that we just, um, a couple of us just come plant them independently okay. of the whole committee and the whole uh, second Saturday workday. Okay, well, Henry, I'll, I'll just keep you posted as soon as I know more information from the neighbors. I don't even know when our meeting exactly is, but usually it's toward the end of May. Okay, and we're going to talk soon about the second Saturday workday schedule, and um, if we the June one is going to be in that area, then it would be great to combine it. So great. hang on for a little while more if you can. Sure, great. Uh, well, thank you so much. You're welcome. And Lauren Mills was here, but I don't see her now. So Lauren, if you're here, you could speak up. I don't think she is here. Okay, so we'll move on then uh, to the presentations and discussions. First one is the tree nursery planting. Um, how soon would you want the trees to be planted, Alan? The, seed, the uh, seedlings. You're muted. Yeah, th thank you. The um, as soon as possible. They're I mean they're bare root trees, so they have no soil. They have to be kept in a cold, dark place, which I don't have a lot of those. Um, and. Um, so the sooner the better, if we can do it within a week or less. Um, Could we combine it with the um, South Common since they're just not even a quarter mile apart? We if could. we have enough people? Yeah. It would require a good amount of people because we, you know, we have over two hours of planting probably in South Amherst. If we finish with the library tree, yeah, I mean, that's, yeah, maybe take a break and do it, continue it that, that day. Are, do you have the trees already, or are you saying a week within delivery day? I'm picking the trees up uh, Thursday. Okay. Right. Well, how many people are available this Saturday to continue after the first planting? I don't Sorry. know yet. I'm, I'm out of town this Saturday. Yeah, I have I have to work at the museum, unfortunately. Okay. Yeah, I probably have to go check out like open houses and whatnot. But um, but like the school that I also substitute at, um, they have school off this next week, so I do have like a little more free time next week. Okay, I have no time after well, possibly Sunday morning. I could do, but. Then I'm on the road all week, so. Um, Julian, uh, do you have school vacation week next week too? Uh, not, yes. 
Yeah, yeah. yeah. Amherst is often expensive. Yeah. Um, so that <laughs> most of that week, I would be free if we wanted to do sometime then. Yeah, I can be. I'm. I'm somewhat flexible next week. Yeah, so someone pick a time. day where that would work and. Uh... Um, it's during the week. Let's see. Oh, I'm not flexible Friday. Um, I could do like Wednesday morning. Yeah, I think I think that would work for me. Okay. So Alan, would Wednesday be okay, or is that too long? Um, we can make Wednesday work. Okay, I won't be there, but why don't we say nine o'clock Wednesday morning, meet at the uh, the tree nursery. Okay. All right. I, and I will be away next week. I'm sorry. At the tree nursery or at the um, location on Tamara? Tree nursery. Yes, Station Road. Nursery. Okay. Got it. And this we is, can volunteer is... if possible, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. So who can be there? Okay. Bridge? So 17th. Yeah. 17th. Yeah. Okay. Britt, Julie, and Shoshana? Yep. Sarah? No, okay. And I'll, you know, we'll, we'll let Bennett know. So, and we'll put it out. Maybe we'll get some volunteers. Uh, David, if you're still on, you could add, uh, you could search for students to help with that. It'd be great. And uh, maybe get something on Facebook and on Instagram saying families invited to help plant the new seedlings. Yeah, yeah and we can also talk to people at the event on Saturday too. Yeah, and don't forget next door. <laughs> yeah, and there's a new uh, parents, the old parents listserv, which had like 800 people on it, just closed. And now there's a new one. So I don't know how many people are on it. But since people don't have their kids in school next week, if they're not in camps, they might yeah. be more inclined to bring them to help out. So just to keep them. All right, good. So that's the tree nursery. We're set. Hopefully that'll all be done that day. Um, we have all 40 trees, uh, saplings. Um, Alan? Um, you're talking about Arbor Day sapling seedlings? For the nursery, you have all 40 saplings ready. You'll get I'm picking them, all them up Thursday. Thursday. All 40, okay, good. So we'll get them all in, great. Um, they won't be nearly as hard to plant as planting trees, so I don't think it'll take that long. But um, all right, second Saturday work days. This Saturday we're all set. We all talked about that. Um, we'll meet at the common, and then um, do we have plans for May? I think Alan, you said something. I don't know. Yeah, if I Rambling have Road, mm -hmm. Country Corners, over by Applewood, off of West Bay Road, and. So we're going June, to plant, plant some new trees there, plus we plant ones that didn't make it. Okay. And June is Northampton Road. June would be Northampton Road. Yep. Okay. And what about University Village? Oh, that hasn't... Yeah, it's not a town road. Okay. So we'll have to figure out how to do something there, or at least nearby there. Okay. okay. Anything else on plans for work days? July, we can wait. We can maybe do another planting or a work day that uh, tree care day. Yeah. Good. All right. Sustainability Festival. We need uh, a schedule of who can be there at the beginning, middle, and end. Um, I'm pretty flexible. I will be walking stilts for some of the time there. Um, but I'm happy to... Uh, I'm happy to do any schedule. So I think we usually divide it into a third of the time. It's 10 to four, say nine o'clock for setup and you know, 4 30 or so. So if we do two, two and a half hours shifts or a little longer, that'd be great. Someone want to uh, make a can schedule. Can you remind me, Henry, what, what are we tabling? What are we doing? Well, We're handing uh, out the saplings. Handing out saplings, handing out information, talking to people, we'll put up the signs. Who has the signs? Alan, do you have them or Julian? I do. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So bring those. We'll post those up. 
Um, yeah, whatever literature we have, I've got some literature. I'll dig through my stuff. We never really came up with a new, um, a new brochure. Yes, Britt. I have a bunch of stuff that my students made last year for their tree fest thing, um, including a tree trivia game. And um, I have to look in my barn, but um, quite a few tree related activities that people could engage with in different ways that I can bring. Okay, that's great. And Alan, are you gonna bring big uh, cross section cookies of trees? Yes. Good. That's always a big hit. I'll bring, I'll try to bring some trees as well, you know, okay. Doug trees. Yeah, you know, the best thing you ever brought was when you brought that tree that had been strangled by the girdling roots. And uh, people could really see what happened. So if you happen to have another one of those, that'd be good. <laughs> I'll look for it. Okay. Um, good. So who wants to do the first shift? Um, so it'd be me getting there around nine, so setting up and starting to bag trees. And Alan, do you have enough bags for the trees I'm getting? I'm getting the... Uh, the um, witch hazel. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Yep. Good. Okay. I um I still have so um I we have fifty of those Professor Elwood sorry yeah Professor Elwood Picklethorns activity book um That's great. all about trees. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad that's and, what uh, like it, it's got all kinds of you know stuff i don't know if you can see it um it's quite thick there's a lot of stuff here um so we have 50 of those booklets and we're gonna i've been trying to get shoshana a copy so she can see if she can work it into the months and memorial library activity stuff but um i don't think we're going to give away 50 of those books there um so we could um possibly try to give these out or have an activity with those books with the kids that Harbor Day Sustainability Festival. Okay. Um, before we move on, Shoshana, or oh, hold on, Shoshana, how many hours did you have this last month? Um, probably like six. Okay, good, thanks. Okay, Ellen? Um, should we do the, I, I think we've done it in the past, like a little strip of paper about how to plant the tree saplings or what to expect with those three breed or species? Two species, but um, yeah, yeah, that's a great idea. Um, yeah, so someone would need to write that up. I don't know who I has. Can, I, I can do that. Um, just um, quickly, <laughs> sorry, remind me what we're handing out. Um, witch hazel and shagbark hickory. American right. witch hazel and shagbark hickory, yeah. Okay. Good. Um, does anyone have what we wrote up last time? I think I, I might have it somewhere. I can look for it and send it to you and you can add that a little bit of how to plant or, yeah, but a little yeah, bit about the species. Great. Yeah. I'll just make a bunch of them. I, I can help out that day, but I can't do the first shift. So, um, cause I'm getting home super late that night. Um, so I'll just, whoever's doing the first shift, I can email them the things or I'll cut them up myself and drop them off. Okay. Somebody. Um, I could do first shift. I can probably do two shifts because I'm not, I feel like a slacker because I'm not going to be there this weekend um, mm -hmm. for the planting. And I, I have a ton of books and, you know, we could even put, it's easy to put stuff together for kids, I think. Um, so I'll just bring what I have and I'll, I can do the first and second. Okay. Shift. I can do first, but um, like, I'll then like, it depends on when like the open houses are going to be on that particular day that when I'm going to take off from that, but like, I can start off being there. Okay. So I, I divided up nine to 1130, 1130 to two and two to 430. So, all right, if, um, Shoshan, if you can do the first shift, I'll do, I'll, I'll do the second shift. Okay. I can do the last one if that's where right. we need. That'd be good. Sarah? Um, we're moving back into our house on that day. Um, okay. It's the only day we have 
family available to help us move furniture. So I'm going to come for the first hour, <laughs> um, mm -hmm. but I can't stay until 1130. Yeah, I'm okay. probably be there like nine to nine, 930, 940. Okay. Um, Ellen, can you do some or you're away? Um, no, I get home late that night. I'll, I'll do the second shift when that starts at 11. 11.30, yeah. Okay. All right, so I'll maybe do the end then. Uh, you yeah, know, that should work for me. Okay, so we have Sarah and Britt and Shoshana for the first shift, then Britt and Ellen for the second shift, and Julie and me for the third shift. And maybe Bennett can help out too. And who has the, so those of us who are doing the first shift, do we, will we have this, the materials that need to be set up initially or whoever has those will drop off? Like, do I need to bring a table? Do we have a table? Um, I have a table I could uh, loan. Okay. Yeah, uh, so I'll, I'll get a table. Um, and then whatever literature I have, I'll arrange to get that to Alan or to Julian. Okay. No, Julian's not on the first shift, so Alan or... Or to you, Britt, yeah. You can bring, yeah, you can bring it to my house if you want. Um, if folks want to um, get me the material Friday, I can load it onto our truck. Because we, we actually deliver a lot of the tables for the, the event for the all the town stuff. So we're, we're pulling stuff there. I'll be bringing the trees and whatever else. Um, so it would be easier for people to just arrange, either drop it off or have you pick it up Friday before the event. We put it in the back of the truck. We'll park it inside overnight. And first thing in the morning, we roll out with it. Um, so I'll be there. Um, OK. So we'll try to get stuff to And Julian has the sign, so I'll have to be there. And I'll go through my literature, see what I have. And anyone else has something to be good? Yeah, get that over there in time. Good. Yeah, I'll probably there. bring the canopy. I'll bring the canopy that morning. I can bring it right at 9, and then I'll drop it off and drive my car back home and run back. Um, yeah. Okay, good. Uh, that's good. That sounds like we've got that covered. Um, what's next on the agenda? Anything else for the Sustainability Festival? Did anybody respond, Henry, to um, Stephanie's request for a booth for a demonstration of some kind? I did not. We didn't really come up with anything, did we? Okay. Did we come what up with something? the request? I can see us doing like maybe a, a pruning workshop led by Henry. <laughs> yeah, I think at this late date and there's so much else going on, I'm not going to be able to do that. And, you know, I didn't say we'd do it, so we're not on the schedule to do that. So I don't think we need to. Yeah, let's just have the booth. Um, but, you know, that's the type of thing that if we thought about it ahead of time and really worked something out, then we could say we would like to do this presentation at that. And also in terms of literature to hand out, that's something else would be great to have that done ahead of time. You know, like if David had written that letter for the to the editor, maybe we could print out copies and have that on the table. Things like that. Ways to get our name out to people in, you know, useful and nice looking pieces of literature. And we have that lovely display thing that Shoshana's friend made, but we don't quite have stuff that fits in it. So stuff like that, we need to, that needs to be planned in advance. So start thinking for next year about that. And when you're there this year, like think, what could this table use? What could our presence here use to really help expand our message to people? Yeah. Do we have a tablecloth for the table? And I have an a tablecloth I can bring, yeah. Okay. Yeah, let me put that down. I usually have the tree city USA flags we drape over the table too. So. Yeah. Maybe a couple rocks in case it's windy. A uh, bunch of rocks would be great if people can bring rocks to put on literature. Yes. Everything always blows away there. Yeah. And I have table clamps that are good for the uh, flags and tablecloths. Oh, clamps. That's good too. Yeah. Great. Okay. All right. Anything else sustainability wise, festival wise? No. Okay, next is Arbor Day, which is April 26th. Um, we don't have to do something. We're already doing a lot in April, but 
you know, if we want to do something that could get in the proclamation too, but. Um, Alan, anything about a speaker or that's just not happening at this point? Yeah, it's not gonna happen. Okay. So maybe we don't need to do something on the actual Massachusetts Arbor Day, which is April 26th. Different states have different dates. So yeah, there's probably one that's the, the date of the 20th and we can say, we're celebrating Kansas's Arbor Day or whatever. <laughs> but any, does anyone have an idea or want to do something on that day? Is there some sort of proclamation we normally put before the council? Yeah, well, that's what we need all these dates and details for. Do you want to work with Alan on the proclamation? I often do, but. Sure, I'd be happy to. Okay, great. I'll see if I can dig up last year's copy. Good, yeah. Um, so the, the events for April are the uh, second Saturday workday, the um, nursery day on the, whatever the date that is, that's next Wednesday, and then um, the sustainability festival. Good. All right. We could have like a tree happy hour where we invite people from all the committees in the region to just meet at a certain place and talk about trees. Yeah, actually, I think the Arlington Tree Committee has a meet the committee day. Oh. Mm -hmm. And uh, they just have like, you know, snacks and people come and talk about trees and yeah. So, yeah, but I think uh, the t going to the sustainability festival and inviting people to our events is usually where we talk to people. So, but if you want to organize something more, that's great, you know. No, no. okay. Not you, you. I, I was just thinking about, you know, it was interesting to hear from uh, like the folks in the Northampton committee and Greenfield and, you know, is there a way to learn more from these other groups in the, in the region, but it is coming up rather quickly and there's a lot going on this month. So maybe yeah. for future, future, you know, adventure. Well, we usually meet with the other committees. We do our sort of picnic in August. So we can do that again this year. I, I like that a lot. Yeah. And try to reach out to more towns this year. Yeah. Good. All right. Uh, the Mary Arbor Day plans we did. Mary Maple Table. Um, I emailed with um, the uh, town hall and they bumped it up to um, Paul's desk and um, I haven't heard back. Okay, you would want to pursue that still? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Right. I missed it. So was this um, about where the table should go before it goes to Jones or did the plans change on that? Yeah, yeah it was um, offering it to the town hall and I, I was in original communication with Angela and she said that she wanted to bump it up to Paul. So it's on Paul. So that would just be until the Jones is ready to take it or it would yeah. be a loan? Okay, yeah. yeah. It's in my barn, so just. Yeah, Ellen, I think you said that Jones didn't want it until after the um, new library that's what, was built. That's what they told me. Oh, great, they okay, said good, we'd yeah. love that We'd love to have it, but not until like 2025 or six. Good, okay. <laughs> and then, oh, Ellen, you were gonna make the tag for it, right? It says this is. Um, I'm gonna do that whenever yeah. it's ready, <laughs> yes. All right, so yeah. So as soon as Paul says yes, and we have a place for it, I'd like to get that happening in both the, the tag and the table there. Yeah. All right. I, I think I could be wrong, but I at least overheard that the town manager is like on leave or something currently. So it might be a little while. I think he, I think he plans on coming back. I'm not sure. Hmm, I haven't heard that. Alan, is that true? I'm not aware of it, so. okay. oh. but it wouldn't necessarily be. So. Do we want to bring the table to the sustainability festival? Display it? I think that's a fantastic yeah. idea. Definitely. Good. My car is going to be full, but I can make a couple okay. trips. Okay. Um, yeah, we'll get it to Alan, but it'll need to be on something and protect it a little bit. But I think yeah, it's very low to that. the it's very low to the ground. Yeah. I mean, not very low to the ground, but it's not like a, you know, standard. Go on the table, maybe. 
the table on the table? Uh, it's not that low to the ground. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. It's like, it's a coffee table-ish, I guess. Would it be damaged if somebody sat on it? No, it's pretty sturdy looking. I wouldn't want someone to stand on it. I, I would not want a kid to climb on it either. Oh, I wouldn't. Yeah. I wouldn't want them to. But like, I could see it happening, and like, if it would be something, no, it wouldn't be damaged. Damage. It's not. It's not delicate. It's functional. But I wonder if we can uh, maybe just put some stakes and ribbon around it so people don't touch it, but they can see it close. I don't think it would hurt it to be touched, but. But yeah, we could we could figure out the ideal placement for it when when it's there. But okay. I'll make a note to bring that. Well, if you have four I also have the Mary Maple sculpture. <laughs> yeah. That this yeah. made. Uh, that might become that's very heavy because it's like sixty individual cookies of various sizes. Mm. I'll see what I can bring that day. Okay. Well, I'm thinking if, uh, Alan, if you bring four stakes and we just put a ribbon around the table, then nobody's going to stand on it or sit on it, but it'd be very visible. Yeah. Okay. I can do that. Okay, good. Great. That's great. All right. Uh, town tree inventory is next. Um, yeah, so they, uh, we're in, uh, process of getting the selected vendor online to start the inventory. Um, so as soon as they have responded with the proper information, they can start inventory, which will should take uh, you know, three or four weeks to inventory the town. Great. Interesting, interesting little thing about the new um... The new Chamber of Commerce director, Jacob, I forget his last name right now. Um, he, in his previous town, participated in the tree inventory of their that town. So he's he's passionate about trees. So just so. That's good to hear. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, the urban forestry management plan. Still working on it. Uh, okay need the uh, need the inventory to complete it but I, there's still work that i need to do on it before we get to that phase of it, so all right so i'm going to combine that into one agenda item for next month and we'll just yeah good okay uh website update uh bennett's not here so i'll check in with him about that and Britt, in the minutes if you can when any anytime someone says they'll do something if you can make sure their name is listed with that Good. Um, ongoing items, environmental justice neighborhood planting. Does anyone want to look into this grant and start doing some research on that? Hey, you are. Sorry, there's a lot of noise. There's a party that I'm missing at the moment. Um, anyway, um, all right, so we should table that for now. UMass interns, anything new on that? You never got us any, but that's okay. Maybe David, he's not at the meeting anymore, but maybe he'll get some UMass students who want to get involved. Um, state level initiatives, I did, there was another push to uh, finalize the update to chapter 87 of Mass General Law and I did write to the head of the Senate and the head of the House and to Joe Comerford and Mindy Dawn. So that's my, what I did, but not much else happening there. Significant tree ordinance, anything, Sarah? I think Sarah's still hearing us. No, no update. Yeah. And the solar bylaw group, anything, Julian? I believe actually the next meeting I'll be going to is the meeting of the town council committee to review the solar bylaw. Um, mm -hmm. so that should be happening here in like 30 minutes. Okay. Well, that is all that I have. Does anyone have anything else they want to add or? I had one question, which was, I noticed some trees were taken down on West, um, not West Street, um, Henry Street uh, by, like right before the divot, um, by some of those new construction homes a little bit past uh, Shootsbury Road. 
two two trees um sort of up pretty close to the street i don't know how far the public way extends back um but i noticed just a private homeowner out there with his chainsaw and i was wondering if that was those new oh. houses that are up you kind of go down the dip and then come yep. up and there's the new houses there, exactly. so none of those trees there are town trees okay. um, actually they're all private um we have a the right away there's very narrow on henry street okay but thank you for noticing because i hadn't noticed that i haven't been on henry street in a couple of days so yeah i just went down yesterday and was like that's interesting thank you though Great. Yeah, Alan, are you are you okay if I bring up the um, B city? Oh, definitely. Uh, yeah. Thing. So, um, I had mentioned this to Alan a while ago. Maybe I had mentioned it at our at our August picnic. I I think, um, but there is like the tree city. You know, uh, I don't know if it's technically a certification or or what, but that that process. There is another process uh, by which towns and cities can be approved as B cities. And it doesn't just mean that, you know, you're looking out for bees. It's really about pollinators and particularly native pollinators. Um, and this is something that um, my environmental education students this year, instead of a tree event, they're putting on a bug related event. Um, thinking about how to support bugs. And so part of this is that they and I thought it might be um, good if the town could pursue a B city um, certification. And so part of that requirement is that basically the town agrees to reduce pesticide use. It sounds like we're already not using a ton of pesticides um, and that we commit to having native plantings around and I and doing some education and outreach related to native plants. And I thought the tree committee might be um, kind of a natural home for those for meeting those requirements because we could just work into our existing outreach something on native trees that um, supports you know native bug populations and that kind of thing. So I guess I'm just bringing this up to see if it's something that the committee would be open to or interested in. Um, and, you know, if so, then I think the next, I'm not, I'm not certain what the next steps, next steps would be, but present something to the town council. Um, it sounds like it's a $300 fee, which I think my students and I could figure out. Um, and um, then Amherst would be a B city. <laughs> okay um i see no problem with that but again it would take someone organizing and planning and all that stuff um i'm you know when i talk to people who are really big on pollinator gardens i say you know trees are some of the best pollinator plants in the world so right. yeah uh, publicizing that would be a great thing to do yeah. right yeah, exactly. When we're talking about native plants and native pollinator gardens, these yeah. often don't get included in that, but they absolutely are supporting massive, you know, uh, supporting bug populations in a very significant way. Yeah. So. yeah I like it. I like the idea. Yeah, I like it too. Um, I just wanted to offer, I, I know that the Shade Tree Committee covers trees, um, but I often think that the um, buffer strip is when in areas where it's not wide enough to support a tree could be used to support a shrub or pollinator plants, meadow plants, perennials. Um, so maybe there's another group, maybe this is something with the sustainability committee or um, if we were able to branch out um, outside of our jurisdiction to support planting in the right of way where there's not room for a tree that supports um, pollinators and could work towards the bee city. So I think that's a great idea. And maybe there's something we could do um, further. Yeah, that's yeah, I great. Think, I think that those little parking lot islands as well is a good spot for that. That's great. That's a great way that our committee actually, because we are, that's sort of our turf, uh, the, the tree belt, grass belt. So, yeah. Um, the, um, the, one of the um, 
presenters at last January's Tree Wardens Conference um, the, the spoke about um, companion planting. So um, they have a project where they, not only do they, you know, provide a, play, provide a tree uh, to plant in a public way to provide all those great benefits that trees provide, but they also provide um, other plants to be planted with it um, to help benefit the soil and other, um, so they have companion plantings, essentially. It's not just a tree, it's always a tree with, you know, three or four other plants that get planted in the same area. Um, so that's it's an interesting concept, makes sense in some areas. Um, Are those like, I guess it depends on the parking lot or whatnot, but those strips, are they public land? I mean, public domain? <laughs> they are in the public way, generally speaking. Um, and the property, adjacent property owner is responsible for maintaining them. So if a property owner decides, I'm not going to mow that grass strip, then it doesn't get mowed. Um, oh. And so if it's, um, you know, if someone wants to take on planting and watering and maintaining, you know, a, a perennial garden of some kind or something in the grass belt, that's, it's up to the adjacent property owner to do that, so. There was an interesting article in the New York Times about people fighting over the, um, the tree spots in New York City, planting flowers in gardens and things like that. And uh, yeah, and fencing them in to keep dogs out. And it's a pretty interesting article, but I don't think we'd have as much controversy, but it would take someone, you know, or a subset of our committee saying, we want to do this and this is what we're going to do. So let's well, there's a, it's a great idea. I'm not trying to say that, but it, yeah. so you're looking at, you're talking about planting in the public way. Um, so somebody has to purchase the material, you know, the plants, Somebody's gonna to have to water and establish them. Um, if we're planting in a parking lot island that's generally maintained by the, the town. Um, so again, purchasing, maintaining and watering. And unfortunately, the quickest, easiest maintenance um, for something is to mow it. <laughs> um, and uh, so if it's not maintained, it starts looking unkept and people get upset. It's a it's a process to, to if it, in order to make something like this work, you actually have to go pretty deep into process of operation uh, in order to make it successful. So this um, we have a busy month coming up, and I'm gonna have to go very soon. But let's um, let's put this on the agenda maybe for a fall meeting to like discuss how can we make this happen. Maybe it's not us who actually do it, but we put out the word. You know those grass strips that used to have trees? They're too small for trees, but let's, does anybody want to start a garden in front of the house or, you know, put in some bushes and we will help you or we'll advise or whatever? I, I, I read through the B-City ap application and stuff, so a lot of it is educational material, you know, so maybe it is more just that the, the committee or the town, you know, has a program where they educate people about planting in that grass belt and maintaining that grass belt um, with bee friendly plants uh, and trees. Um, so I would, if I could recommend to the committee that somebody really get more information and see what it would really take. We could even be happy to meet with somebody in a, in a smaller meeting um, to go over the application process and see how we could, what it would take to work it into, um, you know, our yeah. planning and operations. And some of it's some of it's like big plan, like when you're renovating the North Amos Common or you're doing Groff Park or um, Kendrick Park, you know, the plants that are purchased for those projects are native bee friendly material, essentially. So it's, it's pretty layered, I think. Yeah, Alan, I'll I'll follow up with you on that. I mean, I think you're right. My impression is that a lot of it is um, about education and outreach, um, and uh, there are no like firm requirements about 
pesticide use, it's kind of like committing as a town to say, we're not, we're going to use less, you know, fewer pesticides or, you know, it's kind of just like saying that this is something that we're thinking about and actively working on in our approach to trees and grounds, which I think you all are already doing a, you know, an amazing job. With. Um, but I'll follow up with you on that. And then I think this conversation about the grass strips is, as Henry says, kind of maybe a longer term um, conversation and, you know, requires more strategic development, um, but the B city could be kind of a platform for developing some of these ideas. Yeah, great. Shoshana. Yes, um, I wanted to mention, um, can you, it's all blurry, but I've got a, I picked out a song. It's called My Roots Go Down for us to sing um at the event and i posted it to our facebook event page a uh, video of it so you could hear how it goes but i also have like some printouts of the words that we could each have and it's um my roots go down by sarah pertle p-r-p-i-r-t-l-e and i wanted to make that announcement during our meeting so that people of the public could find it and uh and join in too but i'll also um email the the committee that Great. link to the uh the video which event is this for just so i have it in the notes correctly this is for the library yeah okay well i do have to go you guys are welcome to continue the meeting but thanks everyone we have some good ideas and i'm looking forward to planting again on saturday yeah. All right. Take care. Have a great evening. Bye. Bye. Thanks, everybody. Thanks.